Do you guys notice something new in our office? We got a light. It's actually pretty neat. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> On uh, Tuesday the 26th, we got our kickoff to wildland season here at South Metro. Really, it's kind of year-round in Colorado. Anytime that we haven't had measurable, pre measurable precipitation, uh, humidity is low, it gets dry, and we have a little wind component, we definitely have fire danger. Uh, so last Tuesday, we responded to two different brush fires. The first one happened in Station 40's first dew area off of Highway 85 and Airport Road. That one was pretty unique. There was a dump truck that raised its dump bed up and made contact with power lines which created arcing and sparking on two sides of railroad tracks that go through the area. Started about two acres on fire. Luckily, the driver wasn't injured, uh, even though his truck made contact with energized power lines um, and the fire didn't extend to the truck either. It was just in the grass. Uh, so we responded to that fire. Map page U35B 7825 South Landers Street. Engine 42, medical alarm. Your incident has been updated in the first machine. Go ahead, Mecham. Go ahead, Mecham. You have purpose, thanks for checking in. Go ahead with the uh, weather update on Office 3. Okay, your temperature of 75, our range is 13%. Uh, had four gusts of 14. 1449. Command Tender 132 is approaching scene with 3,000 gallons of water. Where would you like us? Command PIO 10, they're attacking that fire line now and we'll coordinate on our end. We have brush engine 40 and we're hammering this line on the west side of the railroad track. Near Highway 85, an airport road burned about two acres in Douglas County. Crews mopped up what was left of this fire in Douglas County earlier Wednesday afternoon. It's a perfect example of how quickly this now charred grass can dry out even after a blizzard in the same area just a couple weeks ago. Colorado problems, right? Eric so Hurst with South Metro Fire Rescue well says that's because grass is what's considered to be a one hour fuel. Meaning that's how long grass will hold moisture before it becomes susceptible to burning. As soon as moisture leaves us, we dry out, throw some wind on there and some daytime heating. Every hour that ticks by, the grass is reacting negatively and losing moisture. So when the weather's nice and warm, how long does that what is it? Crews have to be even more alert. Okay, if you want to start that way, and then I'll be over there with you. Okay. For the next possible wildfire. We, uh, yeah, we just got another brush fire, this time in Parker. The second fire that came in was in the town of Parker, right on the border of Arapahoe County and in an area along the Cherry Creek Trail. South Metro firefighters go to the Cherry Creek Trail quite often for brush fires. It's an area where a lot of teenagers frequent, so we tend to see fires related to either smoking activity or playing with fireworks or just playing with fire in general. Uh, the cause of this fire will remain undetermined. There was no evidence left behind, but usually it's a human-caused fire um, and some kind of behavior that's preventable. What's up guys? So Connor and I just came from a brush fire in Douglas County. It was our first brush fire of the season. It got upgraded to a large brush fire. It was two acres. And while we were on scene, in fact, I was doing an interview with Nine News, a second large brush fire came in in Parker. Thankfully, we had PIO Kim on call tonight. So uh, Kim was able to respond from home. She lives pretty close to where we're at and took over the PIO role right away. Got good information out to the community because people around here were kind of scared. It was burning close to houses. What did you see when you got here? So right from the start, um, there were a lot of people very concerned about their houses. It's about, I'd say, 
maybe 200 feet to the creek bed over here. And so when we walked up, the fire was 20 feet in the air in the cottonwoods. And so that's very frightening, especially when the wind picks up. Luckily, the crews were able to stop that right from the start. And so they really just kept it in the creek bed and now they're working on extinguishment or mop up in the back. Um, all I can tell people is if you can be prepared, there is no off season for wildfires. So be prepared today. Two weeks ago today, we had a blizzard and now we're standing here with brush fires. So it doesn't take long. Yeah, it just goes to show you that we can. We can see that snow and all of that moisture that comes just a few weeks ago. And then we're seeing two fires today and in com complete opposite areas. Uh, across the district. So everybody be safe out there. Any messages to leave everyone with? I think we're good. Be safe and mitigate. I learned a lot that day, especially on the second fire, because the fire was burning in an area where there were some dead trees, and so that has some snags, possible dead tree branches that come into play. So it was a really big known hazard for the firefighters uh, that were on that fire, and just to be aware of that and to be in that area safely and to keep out anyone who is not essential personnel out of there so that they didn't put themselves at risk. Yeah, and you'll hear Connor and I talking about LCES a lot, and safety is a really big deal for us on every call that we go to, but certainly on wildland fires, there's a lot of added risk, especially since we operate pretty independently on the scene. We have to know what's safe and where to be and where not to be on those scenes, and we're always uh, very vocal about that. So we're constantly talking about LCES, where our escape route's gonna be, where our safety zone's located at, identifying hazards and all that. And that's a conversation that happens throughout the incident the whole time that we're on scene. So the big things about Wildland, it's a sticker that's on your MBT, yep. LCES, Lookout Communication Escape Route Safety Zone. Um, we have plenty of lookouts on this fire because we've got tons of chiefs all over it. So we know that there's enough people watching for us okay. that if something bad happens, they'll let us know. Yeah. Communication means that your radio's on Ops 5. Okay, escape route. So for now, um, as we're operating on this side of the fire, our escape route would be to come back to the trail and into the wind. And the safest way to escape is probably out the way we came. Wind's blowing it that way, so that would probably work. Really a safety zone at this point would be just get back to the paved sidewalk on the other side of the trucks and we'd be okay. With that, the other safety issue here, these big trees, these cottonwoods and willows. Yeah, um, yeah what were they talking about? The widow makers were falling down? From exactly. Those? So you want to stay well outside of the perimeter of where the fire burned because the fire goes up the hollow trees, will burn out the big branches, yeah, they'll come see, it's down. Like there's little bits up They're there. gonna have to cut them down. So we need to stay out of that area as best we can. Okay. Um, following hose lines is a good way in, um, but we'll do our best to actually stay like well on this side just to watch out for those snags as they come down. Um, so we'll probably follow this and then we'll go over to the left where those guys are. We're in the start of the spring green up where people's grass is starting to get green. But in the absence of full green and, and li living fuel, we have dormant grass. Eric Hurst with South Metro Fire says even though we just had a blizzard, humidity right now is low, paired with Wednesday's warm up and breezy conditions. Just because we have one really big dump of moisture, whether that's rain or snow, it doesn't take long, in this case, just a couple of weeks until we were ready to burn down here. Well, there is no off season for brush fires. Heat plays a role, keeping these crews busy as we move into warmer months. So right after the second brush fire call came in, I actually went off call and I went out of town for a few days. So Connor and Kim were responsible for PIO role and being on call for the district and they responded to a hazardous material incident. That's right. So on Saturday, the hazmat call went out and uh, it was in an area that was right near E-470 in Quincy. So when we got over there, a lot of different agencies um, had responded. What they had told us when we originally got on scene was that it was a suspicious device that was in um, a small body of water that was smoking. So since it was near such a large roadway as E470, they actually ended up closing that section down as well as other parts of the road nearby uh, just to make sure 
they fully investigated what that device was. So I'm gonna take you on the scene there now. Kim right now is taking some pictures. Hi guys. Hey, so we have to stay quite a ways away from where the situation is occurring. So we're trying to zoom in and, and get some more um, images of what's going on, but there's a big roadblock that's right here behind us. And as with any hazmat situation, we really don't want to rush into something we don't know what we're getting into. So they're doing a lot of investigation. We have the sheriff's office, um, we have the bomb team, we have the hazardous material techs. Um, so they're more operational and can go down closer to it. But we're just very slowly progressing really in order to investigate what's going on. As we were on scene, South Metro got to use some technology, the UAV, otherwise known as a drone, to fly over to where the suspicious device was to try to uh, get a better view of it while also maintaining a safe distance. So that helped um, in gathering details and where to stage crews and how to uh, get crews over there in order to fully um, see what that device was. It actually ended up just being some wires that were arcing um, out of the ground. So no one uh, was in danger luckily after that we want to give a shout out to uvm rescue out of burlington vermont for sending us a package including another patch uh, that we get to add to our wall so that's super awesome thanks for doing that yes we love interacting with all of you on youtube on all of our other social channels and things like this is really neat. Um, so thank you so much for connecting with us, uh, for sending this our way. And of course, continue subscribing, sharing our videos and uh, keep on posting, telling us what you'd like to see because uh, we, we really enjoy bringing you different content every single week. Thanks again for all your great feedback. Uh, upcoming videos are gonna include more in-depth Fleet Fridays because we know you wanna see more of the apparatus mm -hmm. up close and the return of Unscripted, which will be featuring METCOM, our 911 dispatch center, and that's gonna come your way soon. So thanks again for watching. See you guys later.